Like I said, I don't agree on every single thing that he has said, okay? So don't try to go back and say, oh, you agree with that? Or you agree with that? I don't agree with every single thing. I agree with most of the things he say, because it's facts. What's up, y'all? Welcome back to another Miller Fam TV reaction. And uh, let me just start by saying he is a uh, pretty much almost the whole world hates him. Uh, they call him misogynistic, uh, insecure, um, just an all around bad guy. He, I uh, found a video that he's impressing the one they call Candace Owens for 10 minutes straight. Now y'all already know who Candace Owens is. I mean, if you don't know, look her up. Um, she's hard nosed, she ain't nothing to play with. She will, when she sees something that ain't right, she's gonna go all in. Just like what she did with the uh, Black Lives Matter movement. She exposed them, uh, just like a lot of other things too, but you don't have to dig deeper on that. But I don't know how, I mean, it, this, this video just popped up on my feed. It was just like, Brad, you have to watch this video. You have to react to this video. And shit, Candace Owens and Andrew Tate? Hell yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We're going to get right into it. Uh, I am curious to see what he's, what he's going to do and say to impress her. Buckle up, y'all. <laughs> anyway, we're going to get right into it. If you're new, go ahead and uh, subscribe. Um, hit that notification bell as well. Go ahead and like and uh, comment if you want. But we're going to dive right into this video. Without further ado, let go. That are flawed. You, you need people that are real. This is the thing. I'm not particularly political. I didn't consider myself particularly political, but it looks like I'm kind of ending up there. And like I said, I'm a realist, which puts me on the conservative side, and I'm not stupid. And I understand very well about the world and propaganda, what they're trying to do to us. So you end up being conservative by default. But you're a real person if you have flaws. If you want to sit and tell a disadvantaged youth growing up in the south side of Chicago what, how he's supposed to live his life from your perfectly manicured garden and your white picket fence, you're not going to get through to that person. They don't care actually, what you have to it say. It actually becomes a bit of a turnoff. I Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Another thing that conservatives is going to blow their minds is going to really upset them. What they don't understand about especially the strength of my message is that to especially the young boys of the world, I'm cool. I'm cool. And, and I know they think that doesn't matter, but if you want to sit behind a desk and go, da, 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 Republican, Bill 304, nobody can, you're a dork, so no one gives a right? You're a nerd. I've got the big cars, pretty women, and I, I live the lifestyle. If you want to really capture the youth of today, you need to get some kind of affinity with them. They need to at least want to be you to a degree. You need to at least be their hero to a degree. This is where liberalism wins. I don't think a lot of conservatives understand that liberalism is sexy. You do drugs, you run around, you burn stuff. It's cool, you get a party. Because what do conservatives do? Stay home, stay home, stay home. It's boring, right? <laughs> At least what they don't understand is that conservatives will sit there and go, he's a terrible role model because he has all these pretty girls in this fast car and he's a materialistic. Da -da. That's, the only, that's the reason I can actually help the world. That's the reason young boys will listen to me. You said it yourself, 14, 15 year old boys, they'll look at my life and go, okay, I want to listen to this guy. He is spitting right now. They don't want to listen to me if I sit behind a desk and read Republican Bill 308. I don't read that crap. I don't know. And they don't care. And I also think that, especially in the masculine realm, in the masculine realm, we certainly like to see people lead by absolute in our example. Because traditionally, we would be the commander or the man we respected into war. So we'd like to know he can at least fight. You like to see he's at least brave. You like to see him lead by example. And I think especially if conservatives want to win the culture war, then they need to lead by example. If you're, going to, if you're going to be a conservative preacher and you want to tell men about how they should live their lives, you should be as strong as possible. You should look in shape. You should be big. You should show your motivation, your discipline. Mm. You, should, you should absolutely, of course, you, we all have vices, but you should be very disciplined with your outlook. You should make it very clear to the outside world that what you've done wrong, what you haven't done wrong, you should take accountability. I think you need to lead by example. I don't think you can preach to men. I don't think you can preach to young boys. I think that's the reason why they don't do so well in school in, in general. I don't think that's the reason why they're disenfranchised. I think you need to just lead by example and let them follow. And I feel like I'm kind of doing that by just live, by just standing up and saying, no, this is who I am and I'm unapologetic for it. And this is what I've done and this is what I intend on doing. And, I try, and I'm going to try and save the world. No, nothing of what he said. Tell me one thing he said wrong. During that whole thing. I'll wait. 
Nothing, right? Okay. So he may have some views and things that he thinks about, you know, as far as like specifically women that I, you know, particularly don't agree with. But as far as like life and what he's talking about, it's spot the hell on. Y'all already know. I'm going to let the video continue. Women are conditioned to act a certain way before marriage, but also during marriage, men and women are conditioned differently. If you have a man who's been married for 10 or 15 years, and let's say he doesn't sleep with his woman anymore, and he goes on TV and says, me and my woman have been married for 15 years, we no longer have sex, I'm not satisfied, I should leave. Everyone will say to him, no, you can't leave. You can't leave her just because she won't have sex with you. Are you out of your mind? Are you crazy? Stick by your woman. She has an emotional problem, etc." If you had a woman who said, I've been married for 15 years, I've been with him, I'm not attracted anymore, I don't have sex with him anymore. Yeah. You deserve freedom. You can go get someone else. Why are you putting up with this? You're his... His feelings aren't your responsibility. So it's actually very interesting. Also, the psyop happens post marriage. Double Women standards are also crazy. Post marriage, they're not dry, not stick around, not worry well, about their husband's marriage. Age. Speaking to your point, I, one thing I speak to the young women that follow me about is making an effort after you get married. This idea, I, I was reading this ridiculous column, Ask Jane, where a guy was writing in, or in, in earnest, saying, You know, I love my wife. She's a wonderful uh, mother to our children. We've been married. Uh, she had one child two, two years later she gained 50 pounds and hasn't lost it yeah. and the Oof. Jane wrote back to him and yelled at him for saying he's like, he's like I'm not attracted to her anymore I don't want to just yelled at him for even saying this I'm going no this is the why are you yelling at him for being honest the idea that marriage is a finish line is problematic yeah. that oh well I got the guy I pretended that I like to work out and go to the gym and now that I've got him I'm going to gain 200 pounds and he's just stuck with me yeah. that That's is crazy. a poisonous mentality That's you should crazy. make an effort for your husband and right. you don't just even Candace knows start a company and go okay I'm rich now no you don't work on that company every day it's rented you don't just get in shape and go, I'm in shape now, it's done. No, absolutely everything's the same and a relationship is, is exactly the same and I completely agree with you. I think the reason a lot of men are also rejecting marriage is one, because there's not many wives to find, but two, I think a lot of men find themselves very unhappy in marriage because the women have no interest at all in satisfying them, like you said, they're no interest at all in, the, in their needs and they end up scared of divorcing her because they're going to be bankrupt in a marriage where they don't feel respected, kids don't listen to them and they're not the king of their own household. So what would be the attraction in getting married unless you're gonna be the king of your own household? And that can be extrapolated and discussed in two different ways. One about feminine uh, submissiveness, but also in about masculine accountability and excellence. Because I think if you're truly an excellent man, you can be the king of any household. So right. it's very interesting. It's kind of interesting how all arguments come back to almost the same base biological things. And you teach women to be good women, you teach men to be good men, and everything kind of works out after that. And if you break those two things, everything built on top of it completely degrades and breaks down. It's done on purpose because they have the world so confused now that they can come at us with absolute garbage and it needs a discussion. If we had the basis of masculinity and femininity in the household, how much harder would the transgender argument be to implement? Think about it. She's a woman, I'm a man. No. But now that people think we're all the same, it doesn't matter, gender is not real, all this craziness because of the breakdown of the basics. So this is why perhaps they see you as such a threat and they see me as such a threat and they see us as such a threat because we've just stuck to the age old adages and the age old ways that people have always been. And I do think that one of the reasons why they dislike me so much is because, yeah, I, I certainly live a teenage boy's dream. But if you want to inspire the next generation, how else are you going to do it, right? You have to have the fancy car and the big yacht and all these things. And, and by inspiring these men to stand up and think for themselves and resist the slave mind, it's doing genuine damage to their slave agenda. Genuine damage to their slave agenda. And I think that that's why I especially ended up targeted. I truly believe that's what's happening. I think 100%. He, all he does is pretty much let these guys out here know, like, hey, Get a backbone. You old man. You know what I'm saying? Like, but the other side of the world wants to say he's just promoting bullshit. How how was what he's saying promoting bullshit? I don't think many people genuinely do their best in the world anymore. When I say do your best, people say, oh yeah, okay. No, when's the last time you actually did your best? Like, I don't train to run marathons. But I know if I gave my best, I could run a marathon right now, first try. If I gave my best, life depending on it. When's the last time people have re genuinely given their best to anything? There are people going through the world and going through life today that don't give their best or 100% effort to anything ever, ever. They can't remember the last time they tried. So when I'm sitting in a dungeon, I'm sitting in a Romanian jail cell, 
I understand that it is a chance that God has given me and my ancestors are watching for me to do my absolute best and to show to them that I am the man I say I am. You can't become the most famous man in the world for mental resilience and God not test your mental resilience. I think that would be a very amateur way to view the world, that you can now become one of the most famous men in the world who talks about mental discipline and mental resilience and God's not going to test it. I think God's going to come along and say, okay, you want to be Mr. Famous. All right, let's see what you have. So I believed it was a... uh, uh, chance to show God and show my ancestors and show my father that I am the man I say I am. And it's amazing how much strength you can draw from that because I don't think many men especially understand that even if you don't have the strength to be a hero for yourself, you should have enough discipline and enough honor to want to be a hero for somebody else. And if you have all the people you truly respect, you should want to be a hero for them. And I think that's the masculine imperative. If, if someone's going to attack your wife, that's when you become a hero. For her. You have to. What kind of man are you if you're not? Mm. And you can apply that to other things. If you apply that to your ancestors, or you apply that to God, or you apply that to your beliefs or your core principles as a man, then you can be a hero anytime you want. So It's so funny that you say that because it really does, it goes, everything goes back to biology. I think about this all the time, no matter how much sociology is behind everything, telling men to act like women and women to act like men. At the end of the day, women want a masculine man. And, a lot, and when they don't have a masculine man and they beat their man to submission, they're not attracted to them anymore. And it's a tail in between. Yes. It's, just, it's just not attractive anymore. Yep. And I used to maybe think of this boyfriend that I had when you were talking about, you know, just defending the realm, the sort of responsibility that men have. And I, I remember sitting there realizing that I had to break up with him because I thought that if somebody burst through the door with a gun, I was going to have to be the one that would have to defend us because he was just Damn. such a flower. 100%. And it's in society is yet blaring at men to do the opposite. And mm. I Well, they're trying to confuse actually, us. So it's, it's crazy how they'll attack you and they'll attack you so violently and so endlessly and repeat it so many times in a, in a, in a bid to beat your soul down. That's what they want, especially for me. I truly believe I'm the number one prize for them to get. If they can mm. get me to just give up. Yeah. If we can get Andrew Tate to just give up. Yeah. Being a man's bad. Come on, Andrew, say it. And it's, it's like, it's dangerous one thing, but it's actually genuinely also sad. When I analyze the situation of the world we're in today, I part of me feels sad that we've ended up in this place where the people who are in charge are so evil and their plans are so, di- so heinous and the consequences so dire that they know they can only implement them if they genuinely remove the warrior spirit from every man on the planet. The best way you can rebel against the slave mind and resist the matrix is just to be the kind of person who uses logic, is stoic, is emotionally controlled, is physically strong, because a strong body is a strong mind, who refuses to be told or labeled as something. You can't label me as a depressed person. You can't label me as some kind of disease or some kind of personality disorder. You can't label me a color. I'm Andrew Tate. This is who I am. I, I work hard for my last name. I understand what's right and wrong. I'm going to do my absolute best. And that alone, in and of itself, is an act of rebellion against you. I mean, it's just, I say it over and over, over on the show. Everybody needs a it's therapist. Crazy. They're talking about their feelings. The truth is, is that every feeling you have isn't valid. It doesn't need to be explored. Sometimes you just have a wacky feeling. You need to just let it go. And because I, you know, my grandfather was such an impact on my life, strongest man I've ever known, didn't shed a tear um, at my grandmother's funeral. They were together from the time he was 17 years old until her dying day. I'm certain he collapsed when he got home. Of course. But this traditional display of masculinity, my grandfather's perspective that a man needs to let it die in his chest, you know, before uh, displaying this emotion had an impact on me. And when I see, like, I guess to give a cultural example, someone like Prince Harry, you know, on TV, with his arms like this, breathing and showing what he learned in therapy, it makes me want to die a little. Completely. It makes me want to die a little when I see men acting like this. Completely. And that's controversial because they're supposed to say, oh my God, he's so brave and so stunning. Like, he's showing this side of him. Everything about Ooh. Prince Harry, to me, is what a man should not be. Right? Absolutely. And what you've done to your family, betraying your family, uh, allowing women to assert that much control over you that you would for profit, betray your family. I mean, everybody's got a family. I, you know, everybody's got family issues. Don't even let me get started, you know, but the idea of selling out your family and then going... The it, royal family. The royal <laughs> Selling out the royal family. I know how miserable he is. He's miserable. There's no way a man can be happy in that scenario because I think masculine happiness comes from strength and to a degree excellence and also comes from respect. Men want to be respected and he doesn't respect himself, his family doesn't respect him and his woman doesn't respect him. I know how unhappy he is, I know how unhappy she is by extension. It's just an unhappy, miserable house. He gave up everything and gained absolutely and utterly nothing. This whole therapy thing, the reason I believe they push therapy so heavily is because it goes into something I said a little bit earlier about selfishness. 
if you convince somebody that they have to spend hours and hours per week sitting in a chair talking about that feeling they had last Thursday in the kitchen. It's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> it's insane. Crazy. You, you want to talk about creating mental illness. There it is. This exasperates problems. This makes it worse. And it also builds this culture of absolute and utter selfishness. Excuse me. They're trying to put you in jail for the rest of your life effectively because they're going to enslave you and they're going to control all the money and they're going to make you get injections you don't need. Yeah, yeah, but you know, I'm sad. I've got therapy. I'll talk about it later. That's all they want. They just want you to be so obsessed with how you feel in your own mind that you can't even look outside of yourself and care about anything. You can't go up to a chick at a bar and say, you know what? Usually I'm really charming. Today I'm a bit sad. Can you, can you give me a pass? Can you let me off? She's like, go away, weirdo. The, people, the chick you want doesn't care. The job you're supposed to perform at doesn't care. If the man who wants to mug you decides to pull a machete, he doesn't care. You can't say, bro, I'm on the move for a fight today. Tomorrow, please. <laughs> Nobody cares. So why do you care? All the people out here in the world don't care, but you're going to sit there and you're going to care you're the only person in the world who cares. You're going to walk around telling everybody, trying to find somebody who gives a shit. Good luck. Because what's going to happen is you're going to walk around feeling sorry for yourself, trying to find somebody who cares. You might find somebody who pretends to care long enough for you to get a little bit of dopamine. But all in all, you're wasting time in a hyper-competitive world where people like me who perform regardless of how they feel are just going to perpetually bury you. I, I think Margaret Thatcher said the best upbringing you can have is good parents and no money. Because you look at Prince Harry with them, you can't talk about anything better for a perfect upbringing. Royal family, come on. It's not his fault, right? Royal family, fine. If you don't give a man struggle, look what he becomes. Tell me the kind of man, if I were to say to you, imagine a man who's never struggled in his life. Physically, mentally, everything's gone perfect for him. He's born in the royal family, everything's been perfect for him his whole life. Mm. Is that the kind of man anybody respects? Is that the kind of man anyone wants to be? And struggle is subjective. Right, so Prince Harry dealing with his dealing with his current problems of his wife nagging to him that's full mental breakdown. Right, my problems are obviously much larger, but struggle is subjective to him. To us, they're almost on the same level. But if you were to compare them side by side, they're absolutely nothing. So as a man, you have to build resilience. You build resilience through going through something and building a tolerance to it. And this guy's had such a privileged life that he's ended up a miserable, depressed, unhappy person. So this is what's actually very interesting when men come to me or young boys come to me and talk about something bad that happened to him. I said, good. Absolutely, not really good. You should be glad that thing happened to you because that's the reason you're going to be the man who can resist the perils of life in the future. If bad things don't happen to you, you're going to end up like Prince Harry. You do want to end up like that, dude. Oh, I got to pause it, man. This, this is... Man. Y'all can't tell me right now that this isn't a good video. This is a great video. <laughs> do you? You're, yeah, exactly. So <laughs> you know, your life's going to be so easy, you're going to get to the end result and your wife's just going to wreck you. Even if we look at Harry and Meghan and how they interact in their home, I obviously don't know. But I can almost say, why, why, why aren't, aren't you happy? I gave you everything you liked. And he's trying to use a logical or an emotional, well, he's trying to use an emotional argument, but it ain't going to work she doesn't respect it. Like he's trying to use a logical argument with her, trying to understand why she treats him so badly after he completely, you know, they comply. But humans are biological, and she, as a woman, want him to be a man. She want him to have some degree of bar bar parameter and barrier. And if you don't put up any parameter or barrier as a man, what a woman's going to do is she's going to push you and push you and push you and push you. She's going to see how far she can push you. So she was waiting for him on a biological level to stand up and be a man and say, listen, you've joined the royal family. You're right. You had to bow to the Queen of England. Correct. Because it's the royal family. Get over it. That's what that's all he had to do. He could have saved himself all this mess. He could have saved himself all the running away and looking like a fool and the upcoming divorce and all this garbage. He could have just put his foot down. He never did. And she was trying to inspire in him the warrior. I think a woman sometimes tests a man to say, oh. okay, how much will he put up? Oh, yeah. 100%. Because they want to see, are you a man or not? Mm. What, if a, what if a man's giving you shit? What will you do? They want to see if you're about it. And she was just testing him, and he failed every time. And that's why he's tried to perma-please her. And now he's in a situation where he's asking her while she, why she's unhappy when he's giving her everything she wants. And she's unhappy because you gave her everything she wants because you're a punk. Women don't want neutered men. They don't. Absolutely. Even if they, even if they personally neuter them themselves, it's not what they want in the end. And that came right out of Candace Owens' mouth. <laughs> so, listen, this was a very good video. Hey, if you don't like it, you know what I'm saying? peace out but for the people like they uh, <sighs> they did all the right they said all the right things that I don't even have to say anything to be honest with you 
Well, what can I say? I mean, they were 100% correct. Candace Owens was agreeing with this man. So what's so bad about Andrew Tate again? Hmm? Okay. But anyway, he has his views on certain things, just like everybody else. So what's the problem? They don't sound good to you? Oh, it's not good to you? It's good enough for you? Oh, no. What? What? Oh, my God. I hate him. Like... And there's videos of literally people saying that they hate Andrew Tate and they don't even know who he is. <laughs> but like I said, I don't agree on every single thing that he has said, okay? So don't try to go back and say, oh, you agree with that? Or you agree with that? I don't agree with every single thing. I agree with most of the things he say because it's facts. But anyway, man, thank y'all so much for watching. Um, let me know how y'all feel about this, man. Leave a comment. Go ahead and subscribe like if you want dislike whatever but this is a great video and um stick around for more because i'm definitely gonna you know definitely watch some more of uh you know interviews like this uh hopefully i can find one but thank y'all so much for watching stay tuned for more peace